Many Excel users know that dates and times are simply numbers formatted to look like dates and times. Because dates and times are numbers, you can add and subtract them just as you would any other numbers. In this tip, you are going to learn how to manipulate dates and times to calculate the amount of time that elapses between a starting date and time and an ending date and time. At their cores, dates and times in Excel are simply numbers formatted to look like dates and times. Dates are whole numbers ranging in value from 1 to approximately 2.9 million, with 1 representing January 1, 1900, 2 representing January 2, 1900, and so forth, all the way to approximately 2.9 million, which represents December 31, 1999. Now, as you enter data in Excel that resembles a date and time, such as 3-29-2012, Excel guesses that what you're trying to enter is, in fact, a date, and it changes your entry into a number formatted to look like a date. In fact, if we change the format on that cell to a general format, we find out that our entry is magically transformed not to March 29th, 2012, but rather to the number 40,997. Similarly, if we change the format back to a date format, we find that that is, in fact, March 29th, 2012. And the same holds true if we enter the date as a number. If we enter, for example, 42,157 as a number, we see that Excel changed that to a date of June the 2nd, 2015, because that cell was formatted to look like a date. Times work in much the same fashion. Times are decimal values ranging from 0 to 1, based on the 24-hour clock. Therefore, if I enter the value 0.5 in Excel, but change the format from a date format to a time format, we find that Excel displays that as the time of 12 noon. Likewise, if I enter the value 0.75 into Excel and change the format to a time format, we find that Excel changes that to 6 p.m. And that is because 6 p.m. represents 75% of the day being elapsed. 12 noon, of course, represents 50% of the day being elapsed. Keep in mind that the value that was entered in cell B5 was, in fact, 0.5, and the value entered in cell B7 was 0.75. Given that brief introduction to dates and times, to calculate the amount of time that passes between, say, 9.12 a.m. and 4.48 p.m., you only need to subtract the starting time from the ending time. For example, as shown on the screen, entering the very simple formula of B3 minus B2, in other words, subtract 9.12 a.m. from 4.48 p.m., results in a value of 7.36 a.m. However, we want to see the elapsed time, and we clearly know that 7.36 expressed as a.m. is not the correct elapsed time. In fact, what we need to do in this case is to change the cell format. By changing the cell format to a custom format, and by setting that format to the one currently being typed, which is H colon MM, and pressing OK, we find that the amount of time that elapsed between 9.12 a.m. in the morning and 4.48 in the afternoon was, in fact, 7 hours and 36 minutes. To measure the total time hours elapsed when that amount of time exceeds 24 hours, you must use a slightly different time format and that time format must include square brackets surrounding the H. More specifically, as currently shown in the screen, suppose we have a delivery truck leave our dock on May 6, 2012 at noon with tandem drivers, and that truck arrives at the destination roughly two days later at 8.45 in the morning on May the 8th. If I simply subtract cell C2 from cell C3, Excel expresses the value as 1.8646, that is 1.8646 days. But if I need to see the number of hours that passed during that time, for example, to pay the drivers based on hour, then once again, I would need to change the format of the cell to a custom format. But in this case, that custom format 
would surround the H with square brackets followed by MM to display the minutes. Upon clicking OK, we find now that the amount of time that has elapsed is 44 hours and 45 minutes. Because dates and times are simply numbers formatted to look like dates and times, you can perform mathematical operations on dates and times the same way you perform mathematical operations on any other numbers. Based on this, to calculate the amount of time elapsed between a starting point and an ending point, just subtract one from the other. On behalf of everyone at K2 Enterprises, thanks for taking time to watch this video tip. For more information on the training courses we offer, please visit our website at www.k2e.com.